everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. I don't know if you've noticed a theme in my last few videos, but I've been getting really into aquascaping. So I am a big fan of the planted tank and all things associated with it. Just not very good at it, but I'm learning. Um, but one of the things I've noticed is it's really expensive. So if you look at some of the proper aquascaping channels, a lot of the equipment, the tanks, the escapes, the plants even, they're really, really expensive. You're talking your, your OptiWhite glass and your CO2 systems, the filtration, all the wood and substrates, and it just all adds up. So I was wondering if I could do something geared more towards the, the budget end of the market um, and seeing what I could achieve without spending very much money. Often when you think of words like value or budget or cheap, they have a kind of negative connotation and you think you're gonna get something that isn't gonna last, it's gonna be unreliable, it's going to be shoddily put together or it'll have some kind of defect or it just isn't as good. And that is the case with a lot of things, but I've found some really good products before, in the aquarium space at least, that don't necessarily break the bank. And what we're trying to achieve here is something that's uh, it's a bit of living art really, it's it's a nice thing to look at and you want it to be nice and you want it to look like quality and you don't want it to be shoddy or hanging together or just not right. So when you think of the budget end of the market, certainly here in the UK, you think of a place like All Pond Solutions. Um, they have a wide range of products and it's mostly very reasonably priced. You'll have heard me talk about their hang on back filters in previous videos. I think they're about 12 quid and they're absolutely fantastic. I've been using them for years and they've never gone wrong. Um, there are a load of products on there, things like heaters as well. I've bought a load of heaters over the years because they're really well priced. Um, and they have their own range of products and it did seem quite good. So I uh, was a bit cheeky, I reached out to them, said I had this idea to make a video, see if I could do a budget, nice looking aquascape. And they've sent me some stuff. So let's go and have a look at it. So this is future me editing this video. I realise what's happened after that last bit you've just seen. I pressed the button which made all the recordings go into slow-mo with no audio. So I've done the entire unboxing and lost it. So I'm now going to go and recreate all that for you. I just couldn't lie to you and tell you that I was doing it for the first time. So this carnage is what's left after the unboxing that didn't happen. Basically they've given me their it's like an Opti White cube tank, it's a 30 centimetre cube. Um, it's a really nice tank, it's quite weighty and thick and it looks premium and that's exactly the kind of thing I'm going for here. It looks really good. They've also sent me a heater. So they've sent me this 50 watt heater, which is down here. Um, which is great. I'm not sure whether I'm actually going to use it for this project or not, but it's always good to have a heater. And they sent me one of these filters that I love. This is the UV filter. This is the little brother to the um, the one that I already run on my Celestial Pearl Danio tank. Um, great little filters, they've got the UV light obviously. I think this is rated for something like, um, I want to say, yeah, 38 to 115 litres. So it's more than enough for the little tank that I'll be using here. It's got the little knob on it that you can turn down the flow and get it exactly how you like it. Uh, and it comes with some filter media as well, but I'm going to use some existing tank filter media so as I can get some fish in here straight away and don't have to worry about it. I've also got this little nano light as well. Um, it's a little LED light that clips onto the side of the tank. A bit awkward to use with the hang on back filter as well, so this will probably have to go on the side. Um, but yeah. Perfect. In terms of price, the tank I think is currently selling for 25 quid. I think this is a tenner. I think the filter's 25 quid and the heater's a tenner. So, like most of the APS stuff, really good value. And I'm not just saying that because they sent me it for free. <laughs> so obviously I've already set this up now, uh, so you've missed out on a crucial time lapse. Um, but what I've done here is I've gone for a dirty tank because I think I can keep that quite cheap. So I've used some regular pot and compost, the same as I've done in several of my other tanks. Uh, the way that I like to do it is I get some sand, and this is just some kiln dried sand that you get from a B&Q or any kind of DIY place. Um, cheap as chips, a big massive bag of it for about five quid, and I've used it for dozens of projects. And it's still going strong. I make a little wall around the outside of the aquarium, 
um, so as you can keep the dirt away from the edge and it looks nicer and you've got, just got the sand here and then make a bit of a well in the middle obviously like a bit like making a cake or something that you would crack an egg into dump in the compost there and for the compost I just use regular potting compost cheapest chip stuff cheaper the better usually no additives no preservatives no extra added goodies uh, that works really well and gives a nice stable base um, I put in a couple of root tabs in there as well and then cap it all off with sand. Uh, you need to cap it if you don't want just a load of muck floating around in your aquarium. I found um, gravel and sand work equally well. I've just fancied sand in this particular case. The tank itself, I've used some backing, the same stuff that I used in the previous Pimp My Aquascape video that you'll see me put on these tanks. Um, again, that was I think that was about six or seven quid for the whole roll, and I've now done three tanks and still got a load left over, so that's cheap as well. Um, rocks I've stolen from other fish tanks. Wood I've stolen from other fish tanks. Obviously, if you're just starting, you don't have another fish tank to steal some stuff out of, or friends that can give you this kind of stuff. Go for a walk. Um, I've made videos in the past about scavenging for aquascaping supplies and rocks. In fact, this tank here is exclusively filled with things that I found by my local river. Um, so you can find things out there for free. I've got videos again you can check how to test your rocks and things like that. For wood, it's easier if you can identify the wood because hardwood is what you want to go for for aquariums. Otherwise, if it's a softwood, it just kind of disintegrates over time. So that's no use to anyone. Or you can go to your local fish store or aquascaping supply place. Um, it will be a bit more expensive that way, but if you're keeping it to a small tank so as we can make it look good, you don't need big massive bits of wood that cost an absolute fortune. And um, So I had this stuff, so why not use it? Plants. These can be one of the most expensive things I find, is getting enough plants. Uh, too many times, and I've made this mistake over and over again, you cheap out on plants and you plant it sparsely hoping that they'll grow and fill out over time and what does grow is algae and if you don't plant heavily enough you get a lot of algae issues in my experience. So again I am going to nick from other tanks if you aren't a member of any kind of societies or local fish clubs. Um, they're good places to source plants, you can get clippings from friends and things like that that will help you out. If you don't have that, then I recommend going online to a good supplier. I've bought these plant packs in the past from places like eBay and it's been a bit hit and miss. I've never really good, found a good supplier that way. So I've gone to a shop in the UK, it's called Aquarium Gardens. I've used it many times. Most of my tanks have been stocked with their plants. Uh, I find them to be really good. I, I also cheekily reached out to them to see if they would send me anything, but they said no, which is fine. So I've still used them, but I've paid for all these plants myself. Um, they've got a, a plant pack. I think you got. I got the five potted plants for, I think it was £17. Again, all this equipment, I'll put links in the description so you can go and have a look at it. But it's very reasonably priced, and each of these pots will have two or three plants in it that I can split up, as well as then back filling with some of my own stuff. So we have got some hygrophilia in this one. So these are from Aquadip originally, the, the farm that they're from. And the labels are really useful. So they'll tell you where to plant it, whether it's a slow or fast, whether it's a slow or fast grower. And that can give you a bit of a hint because some of these plants, I know I've already gone through them, but you haven't seen it. I, I've never used them before, so I'll need to do some Googling. Uh, but for instance, this one's quite a slow grower, uh, but it's a background plant, so I'll put it towards the back. We've got some, um, this one sounds interesting, Mordania. Um, there's been a murder. Uh, again, this is a background plant. It's an easy growing, this is a bit faster. We've got a good old crypt here, Crypt Becketi. Beckett Hi, Becketi. I can never remember how to say that. This is the one that has, I've used this before. I've got this in a few of my tanks. It's got some really dark green leaves and the stems have a bit of a, a kind of reddish tint to them. Um, so it's really quite a striking plant. So this is a kind of a good one for the mid ground. Um, we've got some Cardamine Lyrata. This is a fast growing one again for the center. Um, so I've never seen this one before or used this one before. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. And then we've got some Echondorius, so uh, uh, Ozlot Green. This is the your kind of big centerpiece plant here. 
Um, I've, again, I've had this one before. I've used it in the discus tank. I think it didn't quite like the heat as much as any of the other kind of Amazon Swordy type ones did. So hopefully that'll do really well in this one. So I've got these five pots. I've got some clippings from some other tanks. So I'm just going to plant it up as much as I can really. Um, I've obviously got the, the tank itself has been arranged and fettled and moved around. My viewing angle is going to be kind of this direction. So I wanted to keep the front clear and this, this side clear. Um, my only real concern with the wood was this is quite a big piece of wood, whereas, uh, and that's a good thing because I've only, I don't need a massive bit of wood for a small tank like this. You can make quite a big impact with just a, a smallish piece of wood. So this might be lost in a, another tank, but it's quite big for this tank. So I've been trying to keep the, the wood away from the front and the side as much as possible because if it touches and it's up against it, it becomes almost impossible to get algae off. Um, so I saved myself a job there. I just played with some rocks, moved them around a little bit, see if I can get them as much as possible. Um, yeah, I'm fairly happy with that because when I'm sat back over here in my office looking at that, I can't really see the filter. Um, so that's a good thing. I mean, obviously it does kind of spoil the look, the filter, but I think with the backing and the way that the aquascape is, and my viewing angle is going to suit me absolutely perfectly. Um, again, this is probably going to be a bit of a temporary situation because it's currently sat on a file cabinet. Um, so we might inevitably flood it and ruin all the kids' birth certificates. I'm sure I won't be very popular. But we're going to keep it here for now, fill it up, get it planted, see what it looks like. But I'll probably move it at some point in the near future, but it'll do well for now. So as it starts to fill up, yeah, I'm just filling it with my HMA filter line here. Um, this is my angle. This is what I'm going to be viewing it from. I think it looks pretty good. I've stolen some Java fern from another plant, some Dwarf Sag down at the bottom, some Busive Lindra, a few other bits and bobs. Going for a kind of jungly theme. I think it looks pretty good. The tank itself, I'm quite impressed with. Um, I don't know if you can see them, it's quite a thick glass, so it gives a quite a premium feel to it, and the seams are really good. They're small, there's no big dods of silicon and stuff like that, so it is like an aquascaping tank. I know it's full of fingerprints and stuff there, and I've totally made it look rubbish, but I'm really quite impressed with it. And you know me, if I don't like something, even if someone sent me it for free, I will say that. I already like that filter, so I've already got that filter over here. Um, I've been running that for a year, maybe more. And um, that's been fantastic. Oh, I've got to put that back. Uh, and that's the other all pond solution filter. I run three or four of these in various tanks in the fish room. And they've all been working like a charm. I think they're fantastic. You can just fill them up with anything. Um, so I know that filter is going to be good and the fact that it's UV as well on such a small tank that's really going to help with the algae control hopefully. Uh, this little light too, yeah, happy with that. It seems to be lighting up the tank sufficiently. Obviously time will tell how well it grows plants. But a lot of these plants are quite easy, undemanding plants anyway, so we really don't need anything too fancy in the light department. Yeah, so far so good. Obviously, as this is sort of the angle that I'll be looking at, even though that's technically the back of the tank, I put the background plants along this side uh, because that side, I don't mind that growing up too high on that side because that will be essentially the back from my viewing angle. And then I've got my central plants here and then the smaller ones down the front. Looking good. And there we go, I think that looks excellent. Um, so obviously it's just settling in, um, a few bubbles in the glass, things like that. The filter's giving it the odd spurt as it gets buried in. But I'm really happy with that. It just shows that with a smaller tank, everything's just so much easier. Not only is it cheaper, but it's just, well, for instance, can you see my wonderful um, spirit level technique there? 
that's obviously a bit of a slant. I'm sure I measured that, but obviously got it wrong. Not an issue with a tank this small. Like I say, this is only 30 centimetres cubed. Uh, I think that's about 25 litres or something like that. So it's not going to cause any kind of issue here. And this is just a temporary placement, probably. So I'll, next time I do a big water change, I'll shim it and make sure that's all levelled out properly. But the glass, I'm really happy with the, the tank itself. The glass is a, a low iron glass. I didn't realise that. I just looked at the description again. So it is a kind of premium thing for a budget price. Which is exactly what I was going for. I think that is the perfect little piece of art for your home office or wherever you want to have it. And there's the filter spluttering there. That will go away. I won't worry about that. Um, the filters just have been dialing it in and moving it around just to see what kind of flow I can get because I want to see the plants moving ever so slightly because it's good to have some good circulation. Um, I don't know what to stock it with though, so that's my next question. So that'll probably be one for the next video, so leave me a comment down below what do you think I should put in here. Originally I'd planned to put the killifish that I had in the last video in there, but they've jumped twice in the tank that they're in at the moment and so I don't know how well they'll do with an open top tank so I might have to look into something else in there or maybe I've just been unlucky I don't know I really like the open tank top open top tank look that this gives and the wood protruding out of the water um, so yeah what kind of suggestions can you give me what would you like to see in this tank so I'd like to say a big thanks to Alpon Solution for sending me this stuff. It's not a sponsored video or anything, but they did. They are kind enough to send me this stuff. Super happy so far. It's exactly what I wanted to get out of this budget aquascape thing. The glass is really clear and really well put together. Um, the filter, I already knew I was going to like the filter, so I will continue to like the filter and the LED light, often with these lights. Um, especially the cheaper ones, the default position is off, so you can't use them with a timer, but thankfully this one doesn't have that issue, it's actually got a proper push button um, on off switch so I've fitted that up to a timer so that can come on as and when it's needed um, yeah I'm just super impressed with the quality of this tank for only 25 quid I think that's a ridiculous bargain and it's really done what I wanted I've got a piece of living art in my office cheap as chips um, couldn't be happier as they say so Keep following along, make sure you subscribe and you'll see how I feel in a few months time if I'm still as happy as I think I am at the moment with everything. Um, but yeah, I can't see myself changing my opinion too much. Uh, let me know what kind of tips would you have, what, what things would you change? Because this is all about sharing some experiences of how you can do this sort of thing yourself. And what would you do? How would you change it? Any other tips for dropping the cost and still having something that looks quite premium. I think this is probably even something we could class as the basis. So if I don't like this filter because I think it takes away from the look of the rest of it, I can at least have this running for now uh, and get it up and let the plants grow and then save up and buy a new filter. Um, I can change the lights over time, but right now I've got that boom, instant effect. I'm really happy with it. Anyway, as always, make sure you click the subscribe button and check out the links down in the description and we'll do some updates in the future and you can see how well it progresses but so far so good see you later bye